Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Chris Maloney. I'm an advisory partner at Menzies, and I'm pleased to welcome you all to the second in our series of business lifecycle webinars, where our panel today will be focusing on the challenges whilst trading through the mature stage of a business, which very much follows on from the growth stage webinar that we did in January. Um, if you wasn't able to attend that one, it's on our website. So please feel free to go onto our website and look at that one. Um, so I'm delighted to introduce our panel this morning. Um, we have Penella Stafford from Resonate Interiors, um, who are commercial interior architects. We have Andrew Parker from FTI, which is a niche engineering company, and my fellow partner, Mark Perrin, who is also an advisory partner at Menzies. So during the next hour, <clears throat> we're very much going to focus on three challenges um, that we often see with owner-managed businesses um, during this kind of mature stage <clears throat> with running their businesses. And these three areas are possible complacency, relinquishing control, and challenges with personal momentum um, um, and energy. And we'd also kind of like to highlight areas for focus for success in the medium and long term. So during the webinar, if you've got any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat. So Penilla, um, if we can kick off with you, please. Um, Please let us know a little bit about yourself, um, Resonate and your journey, and give us your thoughts on possible complacency with um, running a business. Thank you, Chris. Um, yes, my name's Penella Stafford, um, half Scandinavian, hence the name. Um, I'm CEO of Resonate Interiors. We are commercial interior architects. Uh, we specialize in workplace design. Um, which is very relevant right now. Um, all, all things interiors, really, uh, floors, walls, ceilings. Um, we, we have some strong values in our business, but um, we're, we're a very sustainable business, and that comes from my uh, Scandinavian heritage. Our clients range from huge pharmaceuticals to utilities companies to banks to, to big media, um, everything from Sony to Roche to JP Morgan to Google. So we're very lucky. We've had an amazing journey. We're 10 years old this year um, and it's been very exciting. Um, in terms of complacency, um, as a CEO, I, I've, I have the opposite problem. There, there is no complacency, uh, very high octane, high energy, um, a million ideas a day. And uh, I think my, my challenge is to sort of keep calm through all of this. Um, through lockdown, we, we were really quite um, clever in pivoting into different types of work. Um, we, we spoke to many, many people through, through Zoom and through Teams calls um, and pivoted our work to, to work for some of the tier one contractors. Um, and then as we eased out of lockdown, um, what's happened is workplace interiors has really um, is turbocharged, I would say, because people want our advice on um, hybrid working, agile working, and, and creating a space in the office that is more of a home environment that encourages people to come back to work. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Pina. Yes, I, I, you know, when we um, spoke during the start of lockdown, um, <clears throat> we were um, concerned about, you know, people not going to um, the office anymore um it was thinking crikey what is next but actually it's gone full circle hasn't it and actually it's um your your very your business is is massively relevant so um it's a complacency complacency really wasn't there absolutely and we're, we're we're very lucky it's um for the last 10 years i've been talking to our, our clients about um getting people to the office creating an interesting environment making sure it is green and sustainable and, and that's where we can support our clients. Um, as our business, I think you need to keep being open-minded. And if an opportunity comes in, my, my reaction is always to say yes. Um, I don't believe there are bad decisions, but make a decision um, and move on and, and work with your team. Um, and I'll cover that a little bit later. Sure, great. Okay, thanks, Penilla. Um, Andrew, welcome. Um, <clears throat> again, please tell us a little bit about yourself, your, your company and your, your views on complacency. Yeah, of course. Um, well, my name is Andrew Parker. Um, I'm an engineer by trade and I'm the owner of FTI. Um, we're in our 22nd year now. Um, we're basically a niche engineering company that predominantly deals with specialist gases and the control of specialist gases. 
um, particularly within the medical sector, um, uh, hydrocarbon gas analysis, and a lot of the new industries that are out there at the moment in terms of battery, nanotech, and things like that. We're very lucky that we've got a great set of customers. Main customers probably um, include Rolls-Royce, um, Eon, National Grid, Olympus, companies like that. Um, and we've really just developed our own business from just being a standard distribution business to then starting to assemble, to then full manufacture. Really, those changes have just been driven by our customer needs over, over the years. Um, we're very lucky that we've grown in 20 of our 22 years. Um, and it's certainly been a roller coaster of um, energy, emotion, and all of those things as well. But um, but we're still here and still doing well. So hopefully that's that's all good. Um, from a complacency point of view, I'm sort of similar to um, Penella in the fact that I've always loved sport. Basically, very competitive, and complacency has not really ever been on my um, on my agenda. But I think there's there's I think we go through. I wouldn't have said I've ever been complacent, but sometimes my focus or my energy might have been dragged maybe in a particular one way or the other. I think I've got three things, I guess, that um, sort of keep me on track with, with that. Um, number one is I have like a 1% rule, similar to when um, I think it was Sky took on a cycling thing. They decided just to improve 100 things by 1% and the, and the ultimate thing would be. Um, so I've got a similar thing with the business. I've got a massive, great spreadsheet with everything from um, how tidy the place is, our IT system, what the garden looks like, my own personal learning, all of those things. And if I'm ever feeling a little bit unfocused, I will literally just open that spreadsheet and say, mm, which one shall I pick today and try and make it better? <laughs> there's, still there's still plenty yeah. to do. They're, they're, that job will just never be finished. But it's, a, it's quite a good way of, um, of if you're wanting to do something proactive during a day rather than just being reactive, Picking something off that list definitely sort of moves you in the right direction. Um, the other thing is I love quotes. I'm, I'm an engineer, so I'm very sort of boring, um, OCD, like things lined up, et cetera, like that. So I try and challenge myself to think differently outside the box. And I've um, got a little pack of cards that I was telling Penilla about that's on my desk. And um, every day it's a different quote. So one of them, for example, the day I met Penilla was, um, surround yourself with people who lift you higher. And what I've started doing is rather than just reading the quote and then going back to um, something, whatever else I was doing, I try and read the quote and think, well, how does that apply to the business? So that particular one there makes me think, well, is everyone I've got in the business actually the right sort of person I want in the business? And it maybe just leads me down a, down a particular path. Today's one is um, we only regret the chances we didn't take. Um, so, I'll, but I don't use them as I, I try and change it from just a quotation into something that maybe resonates with something within the business. Sure. Um, and my final thing is, I'm always trying to find other either either other new business, other business owners, or external people like yourselves. Um, and particularly if they're from a completely different walk of life of mine. So sure. I walked into Panilla's office last week which is obviously she's in design. I'm an engineer. Everything's white, clean, nothing on the walls. Um, <laughs> and there's this beautiful wallpaper and lamps. And, and, it, and it's just about making me just think differently. And that, and that keeps me not complacent. You know, I think, is there anything I can take? Anything, any idea, I'm, I'm up for stealing good ideas off of anybody. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, those are my three little things. Cheers. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Andrew. Um, Mark, um, if I come on to you, really, for, for some of your comments, obviously, just picking up on something Panilla said, really, is that, um, you know, during the sort of volatility of the last couple of years, and also probably going forward as well, where, where a, a company does have a vision and strategy, you just have to be agile, don't you? You have to be open to change. Um, because if you don't, you're, you're, you're very likely to fail. And again, maybe that brings in um, complacency. So, Mark, with some of the advisory work you carried out with, with, with some businesses, again, what's, what's, your, what's your thoughts on complacency? Yeah, thanks, uh, Chris. Uh, obviously, uh, listening uh, intently to Penella and Andrew, I think the businesses don't consciously um, become complacent. I think it's one of those, it's subconscious certain things uh, creep into a business over a period of time. Um, I think when businesses have evolved and become mature, so they've gone through the initial growth phase, established a business, um, the sensitivity is that um, with more people coming into the business, more systems process, uh, it's sort of extra fat can suddenly arrive in the business, which is not necessarily uh, foreseen. 
so there may be over a period of time an acceptance that systems and processes are not necessarily as efficient and effective as you'd like them to be, or even necessarily come up on people's radar, or the fact that picking up on what Andrew said about um, you know the people and surrounding yourself with people who are going to lift you higher, I think is a brilliant uh, quote and a great way to challenge your business because in my experience, if we step back and challenge the personnel which sit within a mature business, there can be some people who could be have negative mindset or um, a, a phrase which uh, Andrew's probably heard me say before, some mood hoovers who've arrived in your business who do have a negative influence on everybody else within the business and they can be destructive. And it's really important to um, challenge the business and make sure that you know that that that, that those uh, people are encouraged in a different way, or in some instances are are not part of your business going forward. So I do think complacency is it's a subconscious thing. Sometimes mature businesses inefficiencies or or challenges arrive over a period of time. I think independent challenge is a healthy thing to actually help business owners step back and have a good look at their business, um, particularly as the business has become more mature. Um, to you know, to avoid some of these issues um, and also uh, pick up on other opportunities which may not necessarily have um, been, been highlighted by, by the current owners. Um, picking up on the Agile point, uh, without doubt, um, I think um, in my experience, SMEs over the last two years have been, as a, every business has been incredibly challenging time. SME businesses um, have, I've seen incredible um, examples of agility where they've had to completely change their business model or the target customers or the sectors that they're working in. Um, there's been some brilliant examples. And I think going forward over the medium to longer term, um, I think it's gonna be important that um, uh, SMEs are continue to be agile with their, when they look at their vision and strategy and they challenge themselves about what the future might look like. You can set a plan and set a course of direction, which is a healthy thing to do, but they really do need to be agile and flexible with, 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 with the plans they put in place um, because the economy is throwing up um, all manner of sets of circumstances which um, we've never seen before. So I think agility is the key and it's a huge advantage over large corporates. SMEs have a brilliant advantage in being agile. Great. Thank you, Mark. That's a really good insight there. Um, it'd be great to move on to relinquishing control. Um, I, I'll, st I'll start with you, Andrew, on this one, although, um, Penilla, you, you have this great analogy where you you base your your business is your third child, um, which, which 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 is great. And I always think, well, why would you why would you hand your child over to someone else? Why would you do that? So so um, so Andrew, um, again, I know you 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 have some uh, you you you've struggled with this in the past because I think from your point of view, you got into what you do because you love what you do. Therefore, yeah. as you kind of move higher up and be that business owner. What you what you love to do twenty years ago is probably something totally different to what you're doing now, and it's quite difficult to to hand that over. So, yeah, it'd be great to hear your thoughts on that, Andrew. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm sure every single business owner has this this same thing. I, I'm um, I'm a perfectionist, uh, as I said before. I'm OCD, and I've obviously through the stage I've always thought um, obviously nobody can do anything as well as I can. So. Um, I obviously need to do everything. Um, that's not, <laughs> doesn't work uh, particularly longer term. Um, I think there's two areas that I've um, looked at really. Um, one is just the people. If you haven't got the right people, regardless of how much you want to relinquish control, you will never relinquish control. Because if, if to use Penilla's example, you wouldn't ever give your child to somebody you didn't think was good enough to look after your child. And that's the same with every area of your business. And I think, you know, I think going back to the quote um, earlier on about surrounding yourself with the right people, I think that there's definitely been times when, when you often start your business. I've recruited people from the pub, the rugby club, the gym, my friends, um, and a lot of those don't work. That is exactly what you do in the early stages of your business. As the business grows and you realise you need a higher quality of person, I definitely think the recruitment side of thing changes massively. Um, and also you have to recruit the right people to suit not only your business, but to suit you personally. Um, I'm sort of very um, full of a bit like, again, Penelope, just like mad, full of ideas, do all these things. And I actually need somebody to just slow me down. Um, so sometimes having a person who's going to challenge me and be confident enough to say, well, 
no, Andrew, we need to just take a step back now. I think so. One thing is the right people, get the right people. And it's, and it's difficult. That sometimes means you have to actually change people that actually you really like. But as the business has evolved, they're now a square peg in a round hole. Particularly, I think you end up employing people who are very good at everything when you first start. And as the business grows, you need more specialists in different areas. So I party company with a couple of people within the business that haven't really done anything wrong. They're just doing what they'd always done and work really, really hard, but they're just simply not right for the business as it moves forward. Um, so by getting those people, that's, that's definitely helped. Um, and I think the other thing is I've taken the time to invest money um, and a lot of time in changing the systems that we've got. A lot of the systems that we had in the first place, whether they be IT or uh, KPI type things, they were things that I looked at that meant that I did everything. And what we've done is by changing the computer system and changing the KPIs, I've got ways that I can dip into small pieces of that to still keep a really good oversight of what's going on. But I feel I don't have to look at the detail of everything, which I did before. So I was very, very hands on before, continually wanting to get involved in everything. And it just simply doesn't allow you to develop the business as you get bigger. So, so sure. putting those key things in place that allow you to have the comfort that the people you've employed are doing all the things that you want them to do. But by just being able to check them in a, in a, in a small report or sure. a small amount of detail rather than doing everything yourself. So those would be my thing. And the, the final thing I'd say is um, if you can't do those and you want to try and relinquish control, you sort of cheat. And that is by just going and seeing someone, going and visit someone, whether that be a, you know, a, another business owner or something. Once you're out of the system, you have relinquished control to the other people in the sure. office. Yes. Um, but if you're, and it, you've got to break that eight till five or seven till seven cycle of being here all the time and being expected to be here. That would be the hardest bit I found anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, lovely stuff. Thank you, Andrew. So, so Penilla, you know, again, um, with um, you, you've run the business for a number of years. You know, the, you're going through this huge growth stage at the moment in many ways, called kind of circumstance really. Um, and I know you've always liked to get involved with lots of things. Um, so again, with your third child, tell me about those challenges and, 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 and let us know what you're doing to kind of let them go. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so I do liken the business to my third child. And I think, you know, um, for those of you that do have children, they go through many, many phases. Some, you know, the terrible teens and, and on, you know, through their life and on to university and then, you know, on, on to some sort of career. Um, the, the challenge is to let go. But as exactly as Andrew said, you, you let go to people you trust um, and that that can really, you know, ca carry that journey on for you and with you. Um, I think that um, you, we around I surround myself by very different people. We are very diverse people. Um, bunch and we're creatives and um, I think your leadership team actually needs very different people around the table um, and that has been a real journey for me um, don't don't recruit people that are the same as yourself because um, they, they can add a different mindset and a different look on on life um, I would agree with Andrew we've um, in the last year year and a half we've um, taken on systemology and it has completely transformed our business. So there is a system for everything that we do. And that means that um, at least two people understand that system. So if I'm not around, someone else um, can run the system, whatever it may be, um, to, to send out drawings or go to a meeting or, or um, send out invoices. So I would say to everyone, have a system through your business and that allows you to let go. Um, I also think external advice is incredibly important. Uh, Menzies, both Mark and Chris have helped us hugely and I'm very grateful. Thank you, thank uh, we you. also have an executive coach um, and he has, he's very grounded and he comes in with a sort of bird's eye view of the world, not our view. Uh, you can be too close to it as a leader of a business and that is something that you, you, you have to be modest and humble and uh, step back and um, let others do their good work, but also take advice, really, really listen. Uh, one of our values is to mindfully listen, and, and that's, that's very important. Um, so uh, yeah, over, overall, um, it is a challenge for business owners, but, but letting go can actually be a joy because it, it gives you the freedom to go on and, and be the visionary and, and take your business forward. Um, 
Thanks, thanks, Peter. <clears throat> Can I? I just want to sort of touch on something slightly separate. Actually, you, you mentioned your values. Now, um, mm. you know, we work together um, pretty closely, um, and resonate do have strong values. Mm. And I just think that um, it's refreshing to see a website with those values stated very clearly, and mm. you really do adhere to that to who you work for, um, who, who um, your, your 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 recruitment. Would you mind just take just take us through your values? Um, because I think that would be quite an interesting um, thing to hear from you. Yes. So thank you. That that was the the first thing our executive coach helped us with. You know, he came on board and said, "What are your values?" And this was about four years ago. And I have to say, we 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 didn't really know. And it was it was the best journey to to really work out what resonate was all about. And um, so so our our values. Our first value is treading lightly. Uh, which means we're very sustainable in everything we specify. Um, we specify 100 miles from site. Uh, we keep it local. We support small businesses. Um, the next is, is work family. We, we realise that we really are a work family. People come in and they become part of our family or the external consultants as well. And, and that value has been really important to us. Everyone feels looked after, cared for, uh, and we work together as you would a family around the kitchen table. Um, we, as I said, we mindfully listen, we listen to our clients, we listen to each other. Uh, that's one of the challenging ones, actually. We think we all listen, but sometimes we really have to dig a bit deeper. Um, we deliver excellence. You know, we're producing architectural drawings. Um, they're, they're sometimes very technical, uh, as, as is Andrew. Um, we have to deliver excellence every time. Um, and then the last one is to consider, craft and curate our work. You know, we, we are a creative industry, we're multi-award winning, which I'm very proud of, but that comes through creating and curating our work. So those I would recommend to everyone, um, work on your values, because it guides you and makes life a lot easier. That's great. Thank you so much, Penina. That's brilliant. Um, Mark, just be uh, interested to hear your thoughts here, because obviously it's, control is a two way thing, isn't it? So, you know, first of all, um, business owners will struggle to to let go. Um, on the hand, on the other hand, where you have employees where they're not given, where they're not being empowered, they're not being given control. Therefore, there's this deemed like a trust. Therefore, you know, there could potentially be a big barrier there, couldn't there? So, um, again, with some of the work that um, you do um, from an advisory point of view, how do you kind of sort of break down those barriers? Yeah, that's a really good point, Chris. I think it's really sensitive because the other side, if the owners <coughs> management team are struggling to relinquish control, it's, well, what's the impact on your workforce? Um, I think businesses all now recognise today that actually retaining and recruiting staff is, is probably one of the number one challenges currently. Um, so yeah. sort of empowering staff um, and trusting them to... Um, uh, to, to be able to step up and deliver and take on maybe tasks from the management team and, 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 and enable them to grow. I think if your staff are able to grow the business by its, by its own nature, the impact of that is the business grows itself um, from its hu human aspect. So I, th I think, um, it, yes, what's the, what's the impact on your workforce if, if, if the owners or the management team are struggling to relinquish control? Um, and we have seen situations where that has uh, occurred and it's sensitive. Um, and I think businesses which um, open themselves up to be challenged and to, and if this is an outcome, it enables the business to then perhaps work with their, their staff in a different way. Um, the point I was just going to highlight, um, which you know, with Penilla's core values, is that that can be empower. It almost can help relinquish control because if you if if your start if you're confident your staff are going to behave and communicate in in accordance with your values, then that is going to enable the uh, Penilla and or her senior team to relax uh, control and fit, uh, and and the staff feel empowered and trusted. So I think it's a really good point. And the other point I would say is the best performing businesses, in my experience have strong best practice. They have best practice in all areas of their business, underpinned by systems and processes, which both Andrew and Penilla have high highlighted. And again, that's indicative that if um, Andrew or Penilla are out of their out of this business or not managing one part of the business, they if people are if they're confident their staff are following the systems, the pro best practice which is in place, it naturally supports, enables um, the management team to let go staff are empowered the business performs better 
But for me, the businesses which have the highest profitability and the, le- and the least risk are the ones which are really hot on their best practice and the management team empower their staff. Um, staff retention then becomes less of an issue. And right now for SMEs, um, retaining staff and recruiting staff is a real uh, challenge. Um, so, so it's an, an area to really focus on. I think, Mark, with um, with that in mind, with, with um, some of the clients that we work with, we, we like to carry out some profiling, don't we? Because often you don't really know um, sometimes the, the, the potential some, some of your team have. I think profiling works quite nicely, doesn't it, Mark? And again, it kind of, um, you might be having someone in a particular role that actually is not really suited, but actually there's lots of potential um, in, in another areas of the business. Uh, yeah, it's a really good point. Um, particularly, um, uh, it fits in with what Penilla was saying earlier, that the danger is, is that human nature might be that you recruit people who are very similar to yourself. And that can be um, unhelpful and may not maximise the value that the, the, the management team could, could uh, benefit by having diverse uh, characters with different skill sets um, in, in the management team. So we strongly encourage uh, management teams to profile um, themselves individually and then see what does that profile look like as a team um, and often that's around we could have situations where the management team are not working well together or there's conflict amongst the management team and sometimes with the profiling with those additional insights people can suddenly see why there's issues or they can't quite understand another member of the management team uh, and you can suddenly have an, an entirely uh, different insight for uh, the whole team and the, and, and the business performs better as a result. Um, so, so I think having diverse skills and, and profiles can be very helpful, um, but you've got to understand where your starting point is. Um, so profiling the, the existing team is a healthy thing to do. Which um, Menzies can carry out if anyone would like any profiling, that's something that we can carry out for you. Yeah. Um, Right, moving on to the, the third topic here. Um, so when we when we when we was kind of planning the webinar, we, we thought you know personal energy and momentum was 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 a key area to discuss. Um, from more from a kind of lack of energy, how do you re-energize, refocus? Um, I mean, anyways, we 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 kind of chose could have chosen two worst people from, from Penilla and Andrew because they've kind of got bundles, bundles and bundles of energy for, for many other businesses as well. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll park you two for the time being because I know with that, that also comes with its challenges. You know, a whirlwind running through your office um, is just, can be very, dist- I guess, destructive at times. But we'll come on to that in a second. But from the other side, um, Mark, um, where you've experienced business owners who maybe got into a comfort zone or maybe, you know, in a position where they're just, you know, the love of their business is gone. What have you seen and, and, and how, you, how do you go about, again, re-energizing, refocusing those business owners to get them back on track and to kind of push on to another level? Yeah, um, a lot of the SME businesses we work with, um, it's driven by an entrepreneur or uh, you know, entrepreneurs within the, uh, as the owners of the business. And their passion and desire are critical in terms of keeping the momentum and the focus and the energy and drive within the business. Um, and we have seen many situations where once the business has reached a more of a mature phase, um, and the business is performing well, it can get, get, get into payback mode and the owner's mindset can be payback and they're, they're sort of reaping good returns and rewards from, from all their hard labor. And that can mean sometimes that the business not deliberately coasts, but it, it can slow down its momentum about looking at the future. Um, or the individuals at that point in time, they're getting good payback and reward for what, what they've, um, uh, all the hard effort they've put in it may coincide with the fact that, okay, well, what's next? But they haven't, they're, they're sort of struggling to understand what that challenge means. One at a personal level, because if they've suddenly achieved, they're achieving a lot more than they ever envisaged they'd achieve financially in their life. It, 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 for me, it's got to come from a personal motivation for the next stage. So I think the owners have to um, sort of step back and understand what is it, what's the, the motivation and energy um, driver, which is going to kick my thoughts on which is going to help me then drive change in the business um, and some of that can be their roles change quite dramatically because they've the business has evolved they've got people in the business which means what they used to do 
and enjoy elements of what they really enjoy doing and the real buzz of what they used to, some of the tasks they used to undertake, they're not doing that now. And they've suddenly arrived in a managerial role, which was not really the initial aspiration of when they first started mm. business up. And that can be a real challenge at a human level. Um, so I think that there's, com there's a combination of sort of competing or complementary points, which make it difficult for business owners to actually step back and work out what's my what's going to be the the next um you know personal motivator or or, or, or energy energizer for me as an individual um so i my my i tend to run one-to-one -one sessions personal lifestyle planning sessions with individual owners at that time to help them really step back and understand what are you trying to achieve for you and your family from this point what do you need from your business now and in the future from this point but and it's trying to that each you're dealing with personalities and it's really trying to ask the questions or plant some thoughts which help them work through what's the next key motivating or aspirational objective for them at a personal level um, and then they can take that 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 might be the the, the the critical point for them to then want to kick their business onto the next level but it is very sensitive yeah i, th I think you know what one of the um uh, areas where we focus on from a men's point of view is challenging um, business owners as much as we can because as a, a as an owner of an SME um, it can be a lonely place and you know sometimes you might have ideas that you don't have confidence in but I think by um, you know picking up the phone to 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 to, to your advisor or, or vice versa uh, I think that kind of keeps the momentum going and, and re-energizing so I think that's something that we're quite keen on doing. Um, Andrew um, I, I get the feeling, yes, you, you are probably like a whirlwind um, mm -hmm. in, in the office. Um, um, it'd, be, it'd be great for you to tell us um, of that challenge. And, and, and if you can, potentially throw in an example of, of potentially where that's caused a, yeah, an issue sure. or, or a complication. Yeah, I mean, um, I am probably a complete pain. To, to <laughs> but I, this, is the, this is the thing about how you evolve, I think, that's really interesting. You're, when you're saying about how you started in one position and the things that you need to drive the business on are completely different from the things that you need to drive the business on now. So the reason it's so challenging for me personally is because the business did need me running around like a headless chicken, whirlwind, doing absolutely everything 10 years ago. But by me doing the same now, it would just cause immense problems. So the problem is it's very difficult to change your own character. Um, so as a consequence, it's, um, it's the challenging thing for my, my word or phrase for the year is to try and be in the moment a bit more rather than um, planning 5,000 things that all need to be done at the same time. Um, and I find that really difficult. Um, I do, you know, there isn't, if, if you say to me, have I managed to find a way of controlling my energy and um, not frustrating people, then the answer is, well, no, not really. I've tried to, I've tried to step back, slow down a little bit, um, try, I find a particular problem that happens between Fridays and Mondays for me, because I go home on a Friday, my head will be full of whatever has gone on during that week. And although I don't sit at home working all weekend, I'll go out on my bike or I'll go for a dog walk or I'll do whatever, my brain will still be digesting everything that went on during that week. So when I come back in on Monday, I've, I've got a thousand things that I need to tell everybody. And everyone else goes, well, hang on a minute, I, you know, I went to the pub, had a Chinese, I haven't thought about that. It's, it's, it's 8.30 on Monday morning, I, I haven't opened the book yet. <laughs> and I think that's the problem as a business owner. You have, to, you have to realize that those people aren't, or most of your team are not going to be like that. And I don't really want them to be like that. I want them to have their weekend and things. And I'm trying to get my weekend as well. Um, but I think just trying to step back um, and realizing that you're a motivator, I guess, <laughs> trying to find out that everybody's different in the business and everyone gets motivated in a different way. That's probably been my most challenging thing. It isn't mm -hmm. about, you know, me running around, jumping around like Tigger or, or, giving you know or giving people pay rises or making people cups of tea different different people will need 
different sets of motivation or, or different things at any one time. And it's, it is really difficult. That is my, this is the thing that I'm bad at. Um, I haven't found, haven't found the perfect way. Um, I have got people that continue to tell me to slow down and I'm, I'm desperately trying to get this, just do one thing at a time and finish it rather than have a hundred things going because other people's brains it's not the, it's not that I'm super clever but sure. I think that obviously I talk, think about my business a lot more than most of my team do um, and they can't keep up you have to step back and give them a chance to sort of catch up with how your brain's working at the same time yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, it's, it's still a job in progress that one if I'm honest Chris <laughs> We obviously love your business, and um, we, we, which is amazing, and, and similar to you, Penelope. You know, I, you know, I spent quite a lot of time in your office. And I, I can see how you operate in your office, and just you kind of, you know, run in, run around, and run out again, and go to a proposal or a quote, get get excited about winning new work, and come. It's 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 great to see, and 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 I think you know, with you, you have a very uh, mixed team, um, which I think is, is is great. But again, how, especially at the moment where it's so busy, you know, how do you kind of, does that, does that cause you issues? Give us an example. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, <clears throat> I am very high octane. I'm really very similar to Andrew in, in every in every sense. I'm very passionate about the business, but I'm proud of that. You know, it's not something I hide behind. Um, and I do charge in, run around, have a million ideas, and I'm sure there's a massive sigh of relief when I leave the office again. Um, myself and uh, my marketing director are very, we are quite similar, and we've been likened to the Snatogen twins, just full of energy from morning <laughs> to evening, which is great. And and we, my, my job, like Andrew's, is to channel that for good, you know, channel that into positive things into the business um, and and just to make sure that I'm not being impatient um, just like Andrew I'm always thinking of the next thing and the next thing and really I should should finish one thing before I charge straight into the next one um, so yeah I th and I think for the leadership team around you the, their their job and their their challenge is to calm us down um, to take the good ideas which are not all of them you know not all of my ideas <laughs> are, are brilliant but um, to, to channel those into something that works for the business and then take that forward while I'm thinking about the next five good ideas <laughs> that are going to happen. Mm. Um, so it's healthy to have different um, characters around. Um, but I think it's a huge positive to have that energy. You know, it's not it's not a negative. It's a huge positive. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Penelope. That's great. Um, Mark, just... Um... Before we um, come on to sort of you, you guys' top tips, when, so, so we've gone through these three areas at the moment, um, but where we're looking at the future now, so we've, we've obviously gone through this um, two years of, 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 of COVID. I think we're gradually seeing our way out of it now, which, which is great. And COVID has is, is, is affected businesses all, all different ways, depending on what you do. Um, but going forward, where you're at this mature phase, what do you think are the key or should be the key focuses for business owners to achieve success not only in the, the, the medium term but the long term what what, what areas should, should be considered um, I think there's fundamentally I mean we've picked up the word um, challenge I think uh, it's really healthy for the management team in a business to continually challenge themselves and challenge the business um, that then means that they will be looking, I mean, in terms of when you talk about time zones, um, the danger is businesses focus on the here and now. Um, and it's really important to keep looking forward. Um, and when we're looking at medium to long term planning, um, for us, we talk about having a vision and, and, a, and a strategy in terms of how you're going to achieve that vision. So um, I, I think the critical sensitivity right now is that um, businesses have been so challenged in the last two years with such a diverse range of challenging circumstances. Um, it has that prohibited planning um, for the medium to longer term? It's a massive sensitivity. I still strongly recommend businesses still look forward, um, articulate a clear picture of what they want their business to look like at a future point in time, um, and then actually articulate the plan of action. They think, based on what they know now, what that critical path looks like um, and really focus on the key priorities along that journey, along the timeline, focus on the key priorities which are going to maximise the most impact of change on your business in terms of enhancing profitability, taking risk out of the business 
and also being mindful about the cash flow impacts of that 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 planning. Um, but a big but businesses need to be agile with their strategic thinking. I think we just need to be very alive and alert to the changing sets of circumstances. Um, and um, that's the, I think the, the, one of the biggest advantages SMEs have over large corporates is agility, the ability to take decisions and implement um, change quickly. And I think that's going to be something which is going to be key going forward. Um, I think the revisiting the business's positioning, the product and service offering in the marketplace, who's an ideal customer, how, how, how can you maximize the chance of converting ideal customers going forward, I think is a healthy exercise to do periodically. And I think um, as the marketplace potentially has changed quite a bit, it's important to keep just reflecting on that. Embrace technology. Um, I think there's been huge change and acceptance. For example, if you look at how many virtual meetings are happening i mean who would have thought we'd be having this number of virtual meetings um so so i think sme businesses have responded to um to ch technological change i would just be encouraging businesses to keep doing that um which helps you um challenge and establish better best practice so when andrew and penella were talking about systems and processes use technology to to, to the maximum advantage focus on retaining and recruiting staff. They're going to be really important over the, the medium to long-term planning and be very key. Supply chain management has been become even more crucial. I think businesses have often focused on customer account management and staying close to customers, staying very close to your supply chain. Um, I sense in the, over uh, the short, medium and longer term, give, with all the challenges that we've seen, is going to be an important uh, factor and having quality reporting, quality financial reporting, uh, cash flow management, and monitoring the key drivers in your business over the short, medium, and long term is important. So people might hear the word key performance indicators, KPIs. Be very clear about what the key drivers are in your business and track them closely. So those are the key things that I would highlight. Great, thank you, Mark. Um, uh, we're just gonna put a poll up um, now just um, for the attendees to let us know whether they would like any further advice um, from, from Menzies regarding the three areas that we discussed today. So comp uh, complacency, uh, relinquishing control and um, any um, personal um, energy and momentum issues. So um, that will come up shortly for those attending. So uh, if you'd like to um, let us know uh, on that, that would be great. Um, so whilst um, that's going on, um, to kind of sort of round up things um, this morning, um, I'd like to go uh, around the table. I appreciate, Mark, you've probably already given us your top tips, um, but whether <clears throat> Penilla and Andrew, you would give us um, your three top tips really to, to give to our attendees today on where they are in their mature phase of their businesses, what they should be focusing on. So Penella, if we could um, start with you, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. So uh, one thing I'd say, which is very simple and very obvious, but be brave, say yes to things. Even if you are a 10 or 20 year old business, still say yes, still be excited and still be brave. Uh, you never know where those opportunities will take you. Um, and that's what keeps it fresh and keeps it exciting. Um, I'd also say be transparent in your in your business, um, share information with your staff, the more transparent you are, the more you're taking them with you on, on your journey and their journey. Um, we, we hear that a lot in our business that people are very grateful for the transparencies, the leadership team say when things are going well and when they're not going so well and as a work family we all gather together and if there's an issue you know we we, we solve it we're problem solvers we, we solve it together so transparency very important and with clients um, and then lastly you know we're called resonate and and what I want our team and all of us to do is resonate with our audiences both internal and external um, resonate with those people around you um, and, and you, that will take you a long way to, to feeling, you know, like-minded. And I think that has, that has um, that's borne dividends in the last few years. Great, thank you, Penilla. Um, Andrew, if you can come on to you, please. Um, yeah, I guess um, my first one would be, don't lose sight of what the business is for. 
uh, what's the actual purpose of the business. I don't know whether most of your, um, the people watching or listening are, you know, are business owners themselves. It's, it's, it's realizing that you might have set the business up for a particular reason in the first place, but that's allowed to change. You know, I was 30 when I set the business up, I'm 52 now. The things I wanted when I was 30 were completely different. There's no point in generating a business that did what you needed it to do when you were 30. So I think I try to continue to try and ask myself, why? Why am I doing this? You know, I, you know, I wake up at six o'clock in the morning, my head's like this. Why am I doing that? You know, and when someone says, oh, what's your plan? Or what's your target? And they go, oh, I want to do 10 million. I always go, well, why? You know, what? What was sure. that? For? Yep. You know, and, and and not and don't be afraid to change the reason that you've got the business. I think as long as you've got a solid reason and a belief inside your own heart, then then the objectives can change. That's fine. Sure. Yeah, you've got a different plan, maybe, and a different objective to be able to achieve them. So that'd be my first one. Um, my second one would be I've spent many years wondering why everyone doesn't want to work 150 hours a week. Uh, <laughs> and think about the business every waking moment um, and have the same energy as me. And the simple answer is um, because it's not their business. Um, <laughs> and, and I think if they did think that much, I think either you're going to need to find a very quick way of tying them in sure. or there's a very good chance they're going to leave and set their own business up. Um, so I think I've tried to now look at it and say people aren't going to be as passionate as I am. But for me to achieve the business that I'm trying to achieve, do they need to be? Uh, they just need to be really good at the bit that they're in, the job that they're employed to do. <clears> and work really well together. So that's, that's my that's second brilliant. one. The third one is that every business goes in cycles. And Mark's helped me a lot with this. Um, you grow. You're very busy. You go into your payback mode. You do well. You do badly. You lose a customer, win a customer. And a lot of the time, you're not necessarily in control of that roller coaster. There's external factors that mean you can't. Everything doesn't happen, as we've just seen in the last few years, exactly how you've planned it to. And I think it's learning to adapt and live with that. It's sometimes okay to take your foot off the pedal a little bit, as long as you know the repercut. The you know the consequence of that is if you do it for too long, the business will go down. You know, if you, but it's all right to say, it's, you know, sometimes the business is going up and you, that might be when you're wanting to take your foot off the pedal. And unfortunately, that isn't going to work. You're going to have to knuckle back down again. So I think it's realizing that you have to go with the flow of the business. I know they say you shouldn't let the business control you, but I'm trying to become a little bit more flexible on saying sometimes the business is going to control me a little piece. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've just got to recognize what stage of this cycle I'm actually on. Sure. And what might be good for the business to do then, when to step back, when to push forward, is, is trying to work, be in tune with your business, I think. Oh, that's fantastic. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's brilliant. Thanks, Andrew. That, that's that's fantastic insight, I have to say. Um, Mark, is there anything else that you want to, I know you kind of ran down some top tips um, earlier on. Is there anything else you want to mention? Um, no, I think um, some key words. We're, we've used the word challenge quite a lot. Um, so I think um, challenge, challenging the business, challenging the team um, internally uh, amongst the team themselves and also having that independent challenge, I think is really helpful. Um, keeping focus on key priorities, I think, um, you know, and what Andrew said earlier, you know, if, if you focused on the, on top one, the top one thing which is going to make the most impact and do it really well, it's probably better than a business spreading itself very thinly and not, um, uh, and not achieving um, yeah, the, 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 I think the focus is key, critical uh, priorities at any point in time. Um, and I do think tracking the business performance in the most effective way you can, the quality of the reporting in a, a lot of SMEs could be improved quite significantly. Um, and, and that information, a lot of information could be gleaned and presented in a really user-friendly way very quickly. Um, so businesses can make a, a step change quite quickly if they're open-minded to that. Thank you, Mark. Um, I th we don't appear to have any um, questions, so um, I'll probably wrap it up now. So, um, Penilla, Andrew, and Mark, thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, 
some great insight and again really really appreciate your time um taken to attend our webinar so thank you um thanks everyone for attending if you'd like any more information about what we just um we talked about today please do get in touch um and we'll be delighted to help so again thanks for attending and thank you to our panel have a great day